Carl was within a few hundred yards of Emile's farm when the rumbling of the French air patrols began thundering through the April sky. Here we go. Valiant Hearts, The Great War, Part 11. Uh, besides uh, various characters flirting with death throughout the game, we really have not been faced with much tragedy outside of maybe in the last part, um, uh, Walt's OG owner um, kind of biting the bullet. Um, it's really the only tragedy we faced, so uh, we're getting to the real nitty gritty now. We are uh, within arms, reach almost of Emile's farm, uh, back as Carl. Uh, so hopefully uh, we can reunite with Marie. That would be best case scenario and actually survive this thing and, and potentially escape out of France somewhere a little bit safer. I don't know how this is going to go. got four items uh, to find in here uh, so that's not too bad uh, and also we've seen how um, gas masks continue to be a big mechanic here and gas in general uh, both uh, Carl and Walt are equipped with one currently so um, we'll see what happens there we'll have to definitely uh, be careful although we can uh, basically walk through gas now uh, as long as we're wearing it um, and we did read this little fun fact last time, uh, so uh, if you didn't catch the last part, part 10, definitely pause it and check it out. What? Normally we wouldn't be able to go in here, but we can now. I just noticed there's a basket uh, in the top window there of this structure, so that's gonna play into this puzzle somehow. We can get up there, let's check it out. All right, there's a, a wheel and a, a, like a switch up here, so we'll have to see how that works. It's real. The gas is really bad here, obviously. Pretty dangerous. I'm not too sure what that just accomplished. So I pulled the switch, oh, and that sent this big device way over here. There's our first uh, collectible, in this case a ration ticket. Rationing was introduced into occupied zones, especially for bread as there was not enough food to go around. Rationing enabled the authorities to regulate the distribution and quantity of food available and prevent prices from soaring. Kind of exactly what you think rationing would be like. Okay. We do have a hint, but before I pop that open, let's try this wheel. Okay. That gets Walt up, no? Oh. Does Walt have to get up? Why would Walt? Why would they want me to have Walt up here? The only thing I can think of is so Walt could pull this switch instead of me, but what... What does that accomplish? Let's try it. Let's get Walt up here. Have him press the switch while I'm down below. Hey, Walt, come here! Let's see what Walt, we can do here. I'm definitely a lot more familiar now with controlling Walt and... 
sort of controlling in general. I would hope so. We're in the final chapter here, but it doesn't take me quite as long to jump back into the game as it once did. So it moves this machine. So now, oh. Okay. Hey, what? That's gonna actually lift me up. I thought it was moving this big thing from the left over to the right, but it's actually lifting it right up, right? Because it's on like a pole. Just back where I found that first collectible, I didn't really continue walking to the right, so I wanted to make sure there wasn't really anything that I was missing. Doesn't look like it. Okay, I've got, I've got the right idea now. Not entirely sure how I'm going to get Walt back with me to regroup, but we'll see. When we smash open windows, it clears some of the uh, the gas from off the screen because now it's almost acting as like ventilation for the building. All this gas has um, slowly built up inside this building that we're in. When we've smashed the two windows, it kind of lets some of that out, clears it up for us. So now there's a door that will allow me to get down. There's also this window here. Something new, anyways. Hey, what? Walt will ultimately be able to go in that hole and there's um, a can or something on the other side. It doesn't look like it's a collectible. It looks more like something that I can throw. <sighs> so there he is on the other side. We just got our second hint. Oh, sorry. Still just the first one. Right. And we uh, we did already find that. A little pat on the back. Figured it out ourselves. How am I going to get Walt back? Do I have to go all the way back around? No. No, that wouldn't make any sense. There's a ladder here. Let's try that. Don't want to miss anything. So oh, okay, there we go. That's our way back. Sweet. Off gate. There we go. I guess the pass goes a little too high for Walt there. Hey, come here. It's all right, buddy. Come on. Again, though, how do we get Walt? Walt can't climb a ladder, so no, this is not... ...necessarily the solution. Still can't figure out exactly how Walt would get up here. It's not possible. I thought, well, now we can get Walt on top of that machine, lift him up, get him across, and then he can use the stairs to get down, but that's not really viable either. Because you have to climb a ladder to get onto the thing that lifts up as well. This is strange. I think I got uh, another hint. Be worth our, to check it out. Oh. What? How can I pull that? That's what the hint says. The second hint says we gotta do something with that. We are lined up to receive one more hint here, so that should make things even more clear.
just gonna wait for this final hint here. We have to grab it, but... Okay, so let's raise it back up. We run underneath it again to get to the other side. And then I'm thinking if we can have Walt. Hey, what? What? No, see, I can't order him to pull the switch from here. This can. The only way to get that can is with Walt. Hey, Walt! Can Walt, what? uh. No. What? Hey. Oh, no wonder he can't pull the switch because he's not up there. Duh. God, I'm such an idiot. Alright, let's try this again. I need Walt back up here. Turned out to be much harder. Puzzle than I initially anticipated here. <laughs> there was an option there for Walt to jump, I think, to that platform. Is that a thing? Let's get back up here. Hey, what? Okay, hit that switch, Walt. He didn't jump, I don't think. What? No, it's, it's obviously too far, okay. this closer to Walt so that he can get on top. Now we're talking. Onwards and forwards. Alright, that definitely looked like Marie and Victor, and we, we did know that we were getting closer. There was a couple other areas that I could check out back in this barn, so I wanted to see if there was anything useful, such as this basket, for example. I'm always trying to be aware of my surroundings, any areas that I pass by, make sure to go back and check them out. You never know what you're going to find, and a lot of times it's uh, stuff that you have to find. Anyways, there's a ladder there. 
that we have to go up. There's some bricks there that I can use to throw things. I think we're here. I think this might be it. That clears out some of the gas, anyways. Another switch and another pulley. So you obviously have to attach the basket here. That's pretty obvious. And most likely the purpose is to lift Walt up. Oh, you can move him that way as well. Why would you want to move him that way? that account. We do have another hint. So he's up here. Oh, we can get to the side now, but what's up there? Oh, we have to smash that window on the other side with one of those bricks. I don't want to have to rely on another hint here after that last section, which I felt was rather messy to our usual approaches to puzzles. If I smash that window, we will at least be able to see Walt a little clearer. There's a collectible there. Two for two so far in the level. That is oil, um, an oil lamps. Oil lamps. Electricity was not widely available, but candlelight and oil lamps were. The glass windshield was lifted to light the wick, and the intensity of light was adjusted by adjusting the wick's length. A relic from a much older time now. Okay, so we can send Walt through that hole. That gets him into this room. And thus, we have. Another switch. This is going to allow me to get by here. And lo and behold, another collectible. Looks like gold. Oh, they're coffee beans. Ah, close enough to gold, am I right? Coffee was sold as beans and neither ground nor roasted. Wow. Generally, grocers would prepare the brew for their customers. Coffee was also home ground in Pugo coffee mills. One collectible left. Hey, what? I don't think Walt's going to be able to get down from here, but like I said, we can get forward a little bit. Is that all that's here? Hey, what? This whole section is just for a couple of collectibles. Wow. It would, it would appear to me that's it, unless I missed something really big in that other room there. It won't let me use this thing anymore. That's okay because I can get Walt down this way, no? Walt, come here! So yeah, after finding those collectibles, I kind of hit a wall. So we will have to look at this hint after all. We did that. Uh... Hey, what? Can I get up through that window? And can Walt come with me? So let's get Walt back in that basket, because I think I might actually be able to climb through that window. What? Again, what? That's right, I can't get walled back this way. No, I can't climb through the window anyways.
So the, hint, the hints don't really further our knowledge of what we can do here. I found a way to get on top of this platform here. Okay, this gets walled down with walls, but it's when I hit this point that I'm rather lost. Okay, duh. Here we go. We got separated from Wald there, but that's okay. He's on the far side. Can I do anything here? Can't walk any closer that way. Oh, shoot. Walt can't come here. We gotta get down. Uh oh. Oh, oh damn. Oh, yes. Yes, that's a way down. And we ace another round, another mission, uh, in terms of collectibles, all four, four for four, the uh, finishing with the pipe. Pipe whittled from wood and horse bone, did not know that, made in the trenches. I guess there would be dead horses in World War One, and they'd probably use them for something. Um, along with food, soldiers' daily rations also included tobacco. Many soldiers smoked or chewed tobacco to cover the stench of rotting corpses. Lovely. Gotta be kidding. Those cries from Victor were like next level chilling. The whole time going down there trying to find him. Wow. <coughs> April 16th, 1917. Emil was still sick. But the general needed every soldier who could stand to launch his big offensive. Once again, it was to be the battle that would bring an end to the war. The more I play this game, the more I just sort of reaffirm the notion that all of this is so completely unnecessary. Um, like, oh, here we go again, another battle that's gonna end the war, uh, as if we haven't been trying to do that for the last four years. Um, so if you didn't really understand what was going on there, as Carl, we finally caught up with uh, his wife, Marie, and their son, Victor. Uh, Marie was obviously in bad shape. Uh, we talked a little bit about the use of gas by the Germans. Um, Victor obviously had a gas mask on, and Walt sort of um, aided him in making his escape. He held on to Walt as they exited the building. 
Uh, Carl took off his gas mask and put it on Marie, which then exposed himself, and he collapsed as well. So, as we fade to black, lovely. Okay, and I think it's uh, fair to say that the tragedy train has uh, pulled into the station, and uh, it ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Last time, uh, sort of our last stream, part 10, I, I talked a little bit how I how about how I thought Freddy's whole plot um, string um, had come to an end, and Emil really as well, because, you know, he is just sort of bedridden, and, and then we were surprised because we had another mission with Freddy, and, and his push continues, I think it just shows you the kind of drive that he has to want to continue the fight, even after um, avenging his wife. Um, and now we're seeing Emil again, and this is a bad situation because Emil legitimately should not be fighting. Um, he's like elderly basically anyways, um, but you can see we have a general yelling in our face right now telling us to get our asses together. So I guess here we go. A couple new uh, fun historical facts off the top. Um, I've really enjoyed these. These historical facts have been awesome throughout the game. This would not be the same game um, without the, these and the collectibles sort of giving you the background. So kudos there again with these. Uh, the Chemin uh, des Dames Offensive. Crowned with success ever done, General Nivelle planned a large general offensive in spring 1917, focusing on the Aini Front and Chemin de Dame. The Germans had already held an overlying position on Allied lines for two years and had installed heavy fortifications and an ingenious underground network. If there's one thing you know the Germans are good at, it's digging out trenches. At launched on April 16, 1917, stalemate soon set in, and 200,000 men lost their lives in a matter of days. M uh, mutinies broke out in a number of Allied units. Jesus, the failure of the offensive became a symbol of the violence of trench warfare. Uh, and also, interesting historical fact to go along with this particular mission, espionage. Understanding the important role information and disinformation could play, war offices on all sides took espionage and secrecy very seriously from the outbreak of war. Balloons, zeppelins, and aircraft were used to recon... Oh, Recono tr troop movement. Like, get reconnaissance, basically. Uh, behind the lines, a witch hunt was declared on spies. Countries also sought to infiltrate the opposition parties of their adversaries' governments to influence internal stability, and the Germans provided support for Irish militants and Russian revolutionaries. If they had these ex these uh, expansive spy networks all the way back in World War I, think about the kind of networks that would be up and running by governments in the world today, especially with technological advance. Let that one sit in for a second. And uh, we got our hands full in this chapter with collectibles, um, with six in total. In these missions, you're kind of less likely to find them all, obviously, because uh, they're, they can be really well hidden, but uh, we'll see what happens. So yeah, I don't like where things are going with Carl now, and now we're pushing things with Emil, a man who should not even be fighting, so now I'm starting to think that he is now going to be put in a bad situation. Anyways, brace yourself. Yeah. Oh. Ready. Oh. So I think our main goal here was to um, basically tell these guys to, to get moving. Uh, the general uh, needed the rest of the men. So our first job was to kind of let everybody know what's up and tell them to head out. Leads us to our first collectible for the mission as well. Uh, it's a long way to Tipperary lyrics. It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary, but my heart's right there. Pretty famous uh, verse or song or whatever you want to call it. Oh, 
So you can see, holy crap, the kind of carnage going on around us. Obviously with a meal we're equipped with a shovel. I just noticed attention to detail again with this game, whereas most other characters can run in some respects and meal. Okay, well, he's for the most part walking there, but you know he's in bad health. Here we go. had to rush through there so hopefully we didn't miss any uh, collectibles or such Jesus Christ Turns out we haven't missed any so far. Uh, number two, a letter from a Russian officer. Crayon, April 8th, 1917. My dear wife, Elena Konstantinova. Tinovna. Can't get more Russian than that. I'm alive and well by the grace of God. We are still fighting, but there is not but this is nothing like I imagined. The mud is everywhere, and the battles are draining. My men are exhausted and I'm having trouble to get them to fight. They have heard about what's happening and they want to go back home. How are you? Are you safe? Your loving husband, Nikolai Alexeevich. So, uh, Carl is not the only one struggling with um, sort of being estranged from his wife during this period of time. And this letter just kind of uh, confirms that many soldiers indeed um, struggled in, in maintaining communication with their SOs. So we can see some Germans up above. You can tell by the helmets. It's like some infantry has us covered once we head up, so we have to time this well. Okay, we got a man down and we're gonna try and pull him out. Yeah, basically there is no going back that, uh, now. We just gotta time, we gotta time everything carefully. Can you please stop yelling at me? Okay, so now I gotta get the damn clippers and get the barbed wire. one of the like darker theme battles that we've had so far like you can just tell we're we're coming to the end here shit's about to hit the fan and by darker i mean like thematically
Oh, shoot. I just missed that. The timing on that one there. We're basically watching all these men get absolutely slaughtered all around us. Like, slaughtered. I'm trying to get it to I have both of my guys survive until the end here. I don't want to get either one of them sort of needlessly killed here. I'm absolutely terrified of getting caught out in the open and getting absolutely shredded by that machine gun fire. Come on, Emil. You have made it this far. We can do it, man. We can do this. Oh, shit. So there's going to be some machine gun fire and... We're going to have to uh, basically fall back when they start firing. I was just going to push forward. Both my guys, I noticed, fall back, so we'll go with them. Or not, apparently. The next uh, item looks like a dog tag of sorts, if I had to guess. That's been one of the main sort of collectibles so far. I've been trying to scan all the dead bodies around just in case they happen to have a collectible. Seems like a good place to hide one. Maybe not. Son of a gun! Okay. Whew! Deep breath. So here's another one of those spots where you gotta be careful that you don't dig into the shells. I'll have to hide behind here and only dig when the uh, when the guns stop until I get underground. I mean, you can hear all 
those artillery shells booming in the background there. So that was a smart move by Emil, or uh, as I like to call him, Shovel Man, to sort of dig a passage underground. It's dangerous because of all those shells. I hit one of those shells, my whole party, all three of these guys, dead, just like that, boom. It was a good run. back to the Magnificent Four. Saved a guy there uh, just before uh, that whole area got lit up by German fire. So uh, another little pat on the back, saved a man's life, but we have this nagging general at our back once again telling us to keep pushing forward. So sure thing, boss. So we're not going to be able to make the run straight from cover here, straight up those dead bodies. We actually have to hide in this pile of dead bodies first. This game just continues to become more and more of a lovely, pleasant experience. Sarcasm. Sarcasm, by the way. Dang, so I missed uh, a couple collectibles there, interestingly enough. The thing about these action missions, um, again, I think we've actually talked about this before as well, is you have a tendency, because there's uh, artillery shells coming in and machine gun fire, you have a tendency to, to stop looking around so much and just kind of rush. Um, but anyways, uh, that's okay. A uh, soldier's ring here is an aluminum ring handmade by a soldier. Soldiers often made rings out of recycled metal to send back home to their sweethearts. This place is crawling with Germans right now, so obviously I have no motivation to go back and try and find those collectibles. We've done a fairly good job um, throughout this game already, so I'm not too worried there. Most important for this mission, my main focus right now is I'm trying to get all three of these guys to survive this whole onslaught. So I, I started with uh, three men by my side, um, and obviously the officer um, sort of hanging behind, following us, making sure we don't uh, run the other way, I guess, or he'll shoot us himself. Um, but yeah, now uh, uh, we went down to two men, and now we're back to a uh, or sorry, a three-man group, now we're back to a four-man group, and uh, I want to keep it that way. No more deaths, so uh, that's sort of my main focus here, and I think if you do foolishly run out of cover and stuff like that, not only you can die, but you can lead your men uh, to death too. That's been the case in um, some other missions anyways, when we've uh, led groups as uh, Freddy and whatnot too, so... This has been heavy. This has been heavy in one of the harder uh, combat missions. We've seen a lot of harder puzzles, and now uh, we've seen some, some harder combat, um, so... Need a little bit of a breather here, good lord. So basically every time a scary thing like that happens where one of the men goes down, the general runs up behind us and threatens that if uh, if we choose the easy way out after seeing that, 
um, you know, that he's going to kill us. What a nice officer. How, how, how about you join the fight with us, sir? Um, and, um, instead of just threatening us all the time, that would be nice. Uh, we lost another man to that damn machine gun, so now it looks like we gotta explode this TNT. So much for getting out as four men. Still got two with me, every man counts. Shit, a shell landed right on top of me. Okay, we're gonna start right here, though. Okay, I gotta move quick. Okay, damn, this is actually going to be hard. Because you can actually see the shells that are falling from above are literally falling straight into this soft dirt. So as I'm going along, new shells are falling potentially in front of me or down through the holes in which I've already dug. So that adds a whole other layer of complexity to this whole digging system. Um, God. All right, here we go. God, literally so close.
Oh my fucking god, I actually made it out. Holy sh I thought, well, this is about to be the longest stream of all time. I'm, this is going to be like my first 24-hour stream or some shit like that. Oh my god. This has been easily the most exhausting ugh, play of this yet, but I'm loving every second of it. Look at this place. This is not even, this is no longer even recognizable as like a place on Earth. It looks like hell. Man, you gotta be pretty quick. Right along. So we're gonna lose a man here, unfortunately. For the greater good, though. So I think I have to control the speed of this thing. Like, I think I have to pull the switch to get it to stop behind cover and everything else. Jesus. I was gonna say, so that's just it? Emil just gets hit by a shell and dies? Really? This is how we write stories? I'm still missing one collectible, and I'm still hawk-eyed here for it. Enough of this bullshit. Let's do this thing. The blow was fatal. Oh. The Nivelle Offensive was a bloodbath, a butchery. Soon, mutiny spread throughout the French infantry divisions, and the offensive was abandoned.
Emil was jailed with the other rebels, waiting to be court-martialed. The dogs of war, man's best and most loyal friend, shared the same day to day as the soldiers. Whether carrying messages, saving the wounded, or sweeping for mines, they never failed to fulfill their duty. What? So Emil finds himself in another less than stellar uh, situation. Um, that general who I kept saying was nagging us the whole time, he's basically there to make sure that nobody gives up uh, as in the French army or else they're dead. And that was such a silly battle because like, like I, uh, we, we witnessed people just getting absolutely pointlessly slaughtered around us. And we're just being told to keep going forward, keep going forward. It's suicide. I mean, at that point, it's suicide. And it got to the point where guys were backing out. And Emil did something about it. And we finally got to smack that freaking guy in the head with a shovel. Um, that's sort of been the theme of, of a lot of this game. And that, you know, there really are, are no defined sides at time here. And now we're seeing a mutiny um, within the French divisions, which is quite interesting. Um, and then um, the narrator sort of uh, talked a little bit and emphasized about the importance of dogs and how dogs in World War One were almost as important as um, their human counterparts in um, relaying messages, sweeping for mines, etc. Um, dogs can be smart, obviously, in, in many different ways with their um, heightened senses. Um, well, Walt, who we know was with Carl, um, recognized the poor situation that Carl, Marie, and Victor were in, ran all the way back to Anna, and um, now Anna's driven to uh, the farm here. There doesn't seem to be a lot of fighting going on here, um, so hopefully she can come to the rescue. We have one new historical fact uh, for this chapter, and that is field hospitals. A complex chain of medical units was set up to cope with the war wounded. From aid posts at the front, men were dispatched to field ambulances where, after summary treatment, they were evacuated to CCS, which is casualty clearing stations, and onto base hospitals or ports for uh, repatriation to Blighty. The structure became more refined as the war progressed due to new emerging pathologies caused by trench conditions or gas attacks, for example. And we have four uh, collectibles to be found here in this chapter. We're right at an hour, and I know that we probably only have about two missions, I think, left to go uh, in this chapter, like individual missions. Um, and I, 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 I did, we, we did talk a lot about how we were going to make this uh, a 12-parter, so uh, I think it's safe to say that our next part uh, is definitely going to be the finale for the series, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, that should not be uh, up, if it's not already up by the time you're watching this, uh, it should be up probably within the next 24 to 48 hours, so definitely uh, check out uh, that on my YouTube channel. Subscribe so you know when all my videos come up, uh, new series, now that we're finishing up Valiant Hearts, we'll be hitting something new soon. Um, that's pretty much all I got for you. Comments, keep, uh, keep the convo flowing down below. Um, like, uh, if you like what you saw. I mean, how could you not? Especially with this voice. Um, and I'll see you on the other side. And, uh, believe me, uh, we, <laughs> like I said before, the tragedy train is here to stay with Valiant Hearts, I believe. Um. At the very least, all of our main characters here are still alive. And you know what? As a matter of fact, we have a couple new diary entries, so why not go over there? Go over them. Um, Freddy, uh, from April 16, 1917, says, My friend Emil was arrested today. What on earth did he do? What got into him? I hope he wasn't among the mutineers they are all talking about. I'll go see him tomorrow. Freddy would obviously um, not really approve of mutineers. He's a pretty tough guy, and uh, he definitely go, goes running towards the battle. But he doesn't fully understand the situation that Emil found himself in. I think Emil was totally in the right to do what he did. And then Emil on April 16, 1917. What have I done? Why all the bloodshed? Why all the killing? This war is senseless. 
Uh, Amiel could sense that what was going on was senseless and just sort of reacted um, instead of maybe acting more appropriately. That's it for the diary entries. Interesting that Freddy has caught wind of what happened with Emil. But um, yeah, everybody's still alive. Um, others are in more precarious situations than others, like uh, Carl and Emil are definitely in a bit of trouble right now. Um, Freddy is, is still doing all right, and Anna's supposedly coming to Carl's rescue. Man, I can't wait. Tune in, keep an eye on my channel. You know it's gonna be up soon. Ciao.